What is your final destination? I am a flight attendant for a major airline and the entitlement I encounter is crazy. This week, passengers were boarding the flight as usual. Large roll-on bag on top, personal item underneath their seat. Then this lady comes on and half asses her roll onto the overhead bin. I mean, this bag is halfway sticking out from the bin. So we make an announcement. I and G, please make sure your bag is properly placed in the overhead bin. This flight will be full, and if the bag does not fit as we are closing bins, it will have to be checked. I can see the lady, and she looks at her bag, and stares out the window again. A second and third announcement are made, just for her. I can't stop the boarding process to talk to her directly, so whatever. I would have to deal with her bag at the end of boarding. True to our word, the flight is completely full, and so are the bins. I approach her luggage, and of course the bin does not close. I ask the general area whose bag I was holding, as it does not fit the way it is placed. That's the bag, but there's people's backpacks up there. Ask them to put them under the seat so you can make it fit. Also, there's a jacket behind me bag. My bag always fits up there, she says. There's nothing behind her bag, and it's too long and won't fit perpendicular. The aisle in the bin is full, so I can't place it in sideways. So I tell her this, and ask what her final destination was so I could check it there. She refuses to tell me, again repeating to make it work, do your job. We are approaching our departure time, so I am already flustered with this lady. I said, I'm sorry I can't make it work. This bag needs to be checked. We made several announcements over the last 15 minutes, and you had plenty of time to get your bag stowed properly. People have as much right to these bins as you do, so I can't force passengers to bring down their items to accommodate yours. So I ask her again what her final destination was. She ignored me and stared out the window. Ma'am? No answer. Ma'am! Nothing. Fine. I take the bag down and hand it to the agent. What's the final destination, he asks. Our flight was headed to Chicago. I paused. Lubbock. And our next story was posted by user Kathu underscore O1, titled, Probably the saddest entitled parent story you will see today. Now, back when I was in primary school in the fourth grade, there was this girl, let's call her Sally, who would go to any extent to make my life a living hell. I don't know why she did it because I never gave her a reason, but then again, she had started the minute I stepped into the classroom on my first day. I was new there by the way. I was not the only person she hated though. She hated almost everyone, save for a few of her friends and parents. Now, I had tried to be her friend several times, but she just teased me and pushed me away. I gave up after several tries. She would often make up stories about me and tell them to teachers. Our school works on a policy, didn't see it, didn't happen, which was dumb but that had saved me from detention countless times. Anyways, I had tried my best that year, and by two months, I had already climbed the popularity ladder. And guess who was at the top of it? That's right, Sally. She knew I would dethrone her one day, so she would do anything in her power to get a good grade on her tests, going as far as bribing the teacher. But that's a story for another day. Tuesday, September 12th, 2009. It was the day of the big test, our first midterm. I worked hard for this so I can finally prove myself that I wasn't exactly dumb like I made myself to think. But that never happened. Why? Well, basically. There is this rule at my school which states, no matter what happened, a student has to complete their exam within the allotted three hours. While I was writing my exam, I heard Sally ask permission to go fill her bottle. While going back to her seat, she took a detour, walked behind my seat. Next thing I know, Sally spilled water on my paper. That's right, we had almost an hour left to submit, and she spilled water on my god danged paper. She had the nerve to say, oops, sorry, and go back to her seat like nothing happened. I looked at the teacher, and she shrugged. Oops, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. You know, you will have to submit the paper within 45 minutes. I'll try to consider this while grading your paper, but I can't promise anything else. 
My teacher had said. Everyone in that classroom knew I was fricked. What happened next was completely obvious. I waited for the paper to dry, but it didn't. Then I had to submit my paper incomplete. Up till now, I never told my parents about Sally because I knew if I did, my mum would definitely pay my teacher a visit and cause problems, and I didn't want that. But that day, Sally took it too far, and I told my mum everything. The next day, my dad complained to the principal. She called in Sally's dad, and here is how the conversation went. Car star, MD, my dad, SD, Sally's dad, S, Sally, and P, principal, my dad. My daughter's told us yesterday that Sally here has been giving her trouble since day one. What she did yesterday was unacceptable. I want you to allow my daughter to retake the test or anything that will help her grades. Principal, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Once the test is done, no one is allowed to retake it. My dad, not even do something for extra credits? That we will think about. What about Sally here? Isn't she going to be punished? Sally's dad. Why should my daughter be punished? She didn't do anything wrong. My dad. She spilled water on my daughter's test paper. That's called sabotaging someone. I'm sorry, did you just say my daughter sabotaged your daughter? She doesn't have a need to do that. She is better at everything than your daughter. Sally. That's true. Cat here could never beat me. That's going to be proved from our exam results. Me. Mrs. Principal, I saw her spilling it purposefully. You can check the cameras for proof. At the mention of cameras, Sally and her dad both visibly shuddered. Sally's dad. Well, do that some other day because we don't have time right now. Come on, Sally, let's leave. And that was the end of that. Our principal promised my dad she would look into the matter and look at some camera footage. But we knew that that would not happen. Later that day, my mom decided to go pay Sally's house a visit. Sally lived very close to us. It was a minute away from us. When we rang her doorbell, Sally's dad opened the door. Sally's dad. Yeah? My mom. Hi, I'm Kat's mom. I want to talk to you about your daughter. Sally's dad. There's nothing to talk about. Leave. Right then, a voice called out from inside asking us to come in. We walked in, and first thing we noticed was a woman who looked deathly sick. Her head was shaved, and she looked like she would drop to the floor any moment, but she still had a sweet smile on her face. SM Hey, I'm Dee, Sally's mother. What did you want to talk about my daughter? My mum hesitated at first. No, 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 tell me whatever it is. And then my mum told her everything. After hearing the whole story, Sally's mum called both her husband and daughter and made them apologise to us. She told us she had a brain tumour and we talked for a long time. Both the mothers hit it off immediately and while they were talking, Sally's dad called me. Sally's dad. Hey, I'm sorry for acting this way. I just that I know Sally is going to lose her mum soon and I didn't want her to feel like I was a bad parent. So I had to support her no matter what. I know that's not an excuse but I hope you forgive us. Of course, that wasn't a good excuse, but I understood. Even at the tender age of nine, I knew losing a mother could potentially turn you into a jerk. Sally then apologized to me, saying the only reason she did all that was to seem tough, because if she didn't do that, she would have broken down in class almost every day. After that day, we were best of friends. I would always go to her house to visit her, and we would hang out all the time. I moved the next year, but we still had contact with each other for months. Then both got new friends, and we drifted apart. In seventh grade, Sally called me to inform me her mum had died that day. I had to comfort her through the phone for an hour. The reason why I'm writing this story was because last week, I went to visit her as it was her mum's death anniversary, and I met Sally and her dad. They were the sweetest. I then realised, while most entitled parents are just plain jerks, some are only entitled because of circumstances. Edit. Okay, I'm sick of seeing comments like, this is fake, how can a nine-year-old take a three-hour test, and how does one have midterms in September, etc, etc. Here is my answer. First off, you need to realise that not the whole world is not America. Each country has its own laws, its own system. I'm from India. In India, our school starts in April, and we have midterms in September. 
Now for the part about the exam. Like I've mentioned in a comment, Asian education is weird. Nine-year-olds taking a three-hour exam is nothing out of the ordinary. You can look it up. As for retaking the test, it's a crappy rule I'll admit, but it's a rule nonetheless. I had to do a project to make up the grade, so it's all good. It is ironic how some people are entitled enough to think that everyone should have the same experience as them in this sub. And our next story was posted by a user, I am the Miss Mamouse, titled, Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid on My School Bus. I was a school bus driver for over 20 plus years, worked for three different districts in that time. The first two were normal districts, and the last was for a ESD, Educational Service District, drove a Head Start slash ECEAP bus, had three to five years on the bus. So the last couple of years, I seemed to have hit the jackpot on entitled mothers and kids. I, the second to last year before I retired, I had kids from 17 different countries and had 31 different languages spoken. I had a little guy who was from Pakistan. He wore the head wrap, the ceremonial knife, no knife, only the top of the knife. Sweet little boy. He wore this four days a week to school. Enter our entitled mother and entitled kid. White mum and little boy. This kiddo had me wanting to do marigrets between runs. Ugh. About three or five weeks into the school year, my boss has called me into the office. Seems entitled mother called the school slash transportation, saying that the Pakistani boy had pulled his knife on entitled kid on the bus. I started laughing. Explained that A. Never happened, as they don't sit anywhere near each other on the bus. B. The knife was a fake hilt, the handle only into the scabbard, that I had checked it on the first day I picked him up, told them to come with me for drop off. Entitled mother didn't like how it was handled. I truly enjoyed telling her that none of her tale happened. Entitled mother took entitled kid off the bus for the rest of the school year. Yippee! The second tale of school bus driving, I had picked up a school in a different town and country. What is it with my afternoon runs? I had an entitled mother and kid at my very first stop. Six kiddos here. One of the kid's sisters was on my bus a couple of years before. I really loved their family, Samoan family. Let me describe entitled mother and kid. Entitled mother had five kiddos with five different baby daddies. I don't think any of them knew their dads. Entitled kid, a girl, acts up on the bus. She was kissing up on all the boys and being downright cruel to any girls she's sitting with. I, of course, reported it to the school, transportation, and entitled mother on drop-off that night. Entitled mother makes some crack at me about, you need to grow a backbone. I'm okay, whatever. Well, that pees her off, and she comes up to the steps after me. My nice Samoan dad was right there and grabbed her, hauling her off my bus. I was like, thanks, but you should have let me go after me. See, bus drivers, be we school or transit drivers, are considered federal employees, and you don't mess with federal employees without going to federal prison, and her kiddos would have ended up state foster care. For the rest of the school year, entitled kids sat in the first right-hand seat alone, until I found out she was sticking her tongue out of the parents of girls or flipping them off. So then she had to sit on the aisle seat. At pickup, the Samoan mum met me and would hand entitled mother the sign and clipboard and Samoan dad meet the bus for drop off. He would hand her the clipboard. And our next story was posted by user Sled the Fox, titled Entitled Kid Tries to Drown My Sister, Mum Blames Baby Sister. So this happened in late July slash early August. We were at the local swimming pool, and no one but us were there. We were playing on this float, this matters later, and a babysitter, BS, and three kids walk in. Two of them were twins, the boy entitled kid and girl GT, and a younger girl YG. GT and YG played with my sis on the float. I noticed that entitled kid was being rough with GT, but I thought nothing of it, because me and my siblings are a bit rough with each other when they play. A few hours later, I went to get changed because I was tired and had a headache. I was upstairs in a changing room area when Mai came in. 
She told me to go to the nursery area by the door and sit with my sis, GT, and YG. When I got downstairs, I noticed that GT was lying on the ground wrapped in towels. I asked what happened, and my sis and GT told me what happened. The BS and the kids were getting ready to leave, and so was my mum and sis. The entitled kid was having a fit. He threw clothes and bull toys into the pool. He ended up throwing BS's phone into the pool. He was sent to the back of the pool to get stuff with GT. The BS turned around to put something and turns around to see Entitled Kid pulling GT underwater. In the deep end, by the way, GT was a bad swimmer by her hair. The babysitter dove into the pool and got them out. They sent all of the girls into the nursery and talked to Entitled Kid. GT was okay and she played with my sis and YG. YG told me that EK tried to do this before. They got kicked off of a pool near the one that we were at because of this. I didn't see what happened next, but my mom told me what happened. She tried to talk to him and tried to guide him by touching him and he almost bit her. They got him instead and talked to him. Some of the phase entitled kids said include, She's my twin so I can do what I want. There can only be one of us and I'll do it again. He bit a staff and the police and entitled kid's mum were called. My mum and BS talked to the police, then the mum shows up. He, entitled mother, says that it's the babysitter's fault because he didn't have his ADHD medicine and she should have been more gentle. The BS left crying. I turn out that the kid's grandma had custody, not entitled mother. I don't know much else, but I'll update if anything happens. Okay. Our next story was posted by user Saibara1981, titled, Entitled Mother Claims My Friend Skated Assault Her Entitled Kid, Winds Up Getting Arrested and Banned from Theme Park. This is not my story. A friend of mine told me this. Backstory. My friends work for a nuts company in the Denver area, and the company is actually a vendor for various locations. There are stands in a convention center, entertainment venue, and even a theme park. This story happened at the theme park, which is where I work. He isn't always scheduled there, but I first met him at the skate park while working. It's a long story for another time. On with the story. So my friend is working at his stand, which is located right underneath a roller coaster. At the time, his back door was open because their AC unit wasn't working properly. While he was taking care of some stuff in this stand, an entitled mother and kid were behind his stand. There's a little smoking area behind his stand. Suddenly, the entitled mother says something to the entitled kid. Eventually, the entitled kid walks into my friend's stand when he isn't looking. He tries to go to the warmer where the churros are kept. He opened it, but my friend caught him, slapped his wrist and said, No! My friend actually pushed the entitled kid out, but not to the point where he would fall. He thought that that was the end of it. Oh no. The entitled kid came up to my friend and started berating him about touching her precious baby. My friend simply said, Ma'am, you can't have him come in here and steal my stuff. You have to buy them first. Note, I'm just paraphrasing what he told me. Anyway, the entitled mother loses her crap and finds a security guard. Now, another side note. My friend knows a lot of the staff there, including security, and they know him well enough that he wouldn't do anything stupid. Anyway, the security guard shows up. Before my friend can speak, the entitled mother goes off on a tirade with a completely fabricated story, claiming how my friend assaulted her and her child. However, once the entitled mother was done, the security guard goes over to my friend and asks what happened. My friend tells them the truth. The guard then goes, calls on his radio for backup. Once a second security guard shows up, they arrest the entitled mother and take her to the front of the park, where they'll find her record of past offenses, if she has any. Turns out this wasn't the first time she's done this this season. As a result, she got booted from the park for life, all because she didn't want to pay for a fudging churro. Edit, the skated part in the title was a typo. I used swipe type and I didn't catch it until after I posted. 
Our next story is another one by a certain effort from the last episode, titled Entitled Stepmom Yells at Me for Not Letting Her Kids Into My Room. Important info. I am a 15 year old male, I have two sisters my age, Laura and Liz, and a few entitled siblings. I have anorexia, severe anxiety, and epilepsy, which I have a seizure and alert dog and service dog for, Chase. Chase is really close to me, as I have had him for years and he is my best friend. I have been hospitalized for my anorexia and epilepsy. If I don't eat my food, I have to get a tube, a tube that goes through my nose down into my stomach. Our cast are Entitled Mum, Entitled Sister, and Entitled Brother. Story Our mum recently passed away a few months ago. My dad, for some reason, married a douchebag of a person afterwards. My sisters and I hate her and her kids. We have a fairly big house in which Entitled Mother and her devil children moved in with us this week, so now me and my sister Liz have to share a room. We were okay with it since it was that or share a room with Entitled Sister or Brother. I usually sit in my room doing either homework, playing games, or watching TV. Yesterday morning, I was getting fed through a feeding tube and was drinking tea peacefully chilling out playing some Minecraft because it was the weekend, when Entitled Mother bursts into our room demanding that I let Entitled Sister and Entitled Brother play. Then, when she sees my tube in my nose, she screams like a dying banshee that had mental problems. It was so friggin' loud. Then she starts yelling at me that I have to take it out because it would mess up my, her kid's brain. It's not like I'm a zombie in a horror movie, just a tube in my nose. I will admit, I do wear a mask when I have it in public. Of course, I say no, and explain that it's how I eat. My dad came over to see what was up, and he sees Entitled Mother looking at me, after he pulled Entitled Mother out, and explained why I had a tube in. I think she understood after that. Later that day, Liz was playing on her HTC Cosmos, when someone comes knocking. I open the door to see Laura asking to play with Chase. I say sure, and she comes in. Note, I don't handle loud noises very well, so I was fairly shaky after all the screaming. We are watching and laughing at Liz failing when we hear a knock at the door, and it's none other than Entitled Brother. He sees at Laura petting Chase and Liz playing on the HTC, and he gets bright red. It looked like a bomb went off inside of him. He then starts screaming at me for not letting him play or pet Chase. I just shut the door. Then he knocks on the door again, and when I open it, Entitled Mother is standing there telling me to let her son in. Then she sees my tube still in and proceeds to try to rip it out, which is extremely painful. I slid to the floor coughing because the tube wasn't closed, so some fluid spilled into my airway and my nose. My dad came over right as I recovered from coughing, and I realized that I had the pins and needles feeling spreading in my legs, the sign of a seizure. After that, I passed into a seizure for about 3 or 4 minutes. When I woke up, I found Chase lying on me, entitled mother and entitled sister watching me in horror. Liz was trying to calm me down, and my dad looked like he was ready to have a fight with entitled mother for yelling at us again, or something he told entitled mother. Entitled sister to stop bothering us. They stopped for the rest of the weekend, and me still have yet to talk to either of them. Dang, I hate my new stepmom. Edit. Thank you everyone. I really appreciate this support. I have started a diary and a video evidence in my room. I don't really want to contact CPS or the police, as I would feel really bad putting my family in foster care or something. Hopefully, it doesn't become necessary. Again, thank you for your support. Also, just to clarify, my mum died 11 months ago, and my dad married less than one month ago. Update, the police were not called, CPS is not involved. At the time of this post, there has been recent another incident that has gotten CPS and the police involved. I am currently in the hospital, and I will write about the outcome of the entitled mother and my family once Child Protective Services is done with their investigation. Thanks for the support. And our next story was posted by user Bluggorn, titled, 
A crazy lady followed me home for dumping trash in a dumpster I was allowed to use. So, I'm in the process of moving, and I'm buying a house with one other person, and we are both selling our houses to buy a new one. My house sold faster, so I moved into a small apartment until the other's house gets sold. We moved in at night, and the next day we had a lot of fresh extra trash from my house, so we used the dumpster. A family friend was helping us move, so they were helping us dump things. All of a sudden, this lady in her late 60s pulls up in her car and just stares at us while we dump things. Then she gets out of her car and goes, What do you think you're doing? I tell her we are throwing stuff away and she tells me, This dumpster is for tenants only. She says this as she points to a sign next to the dumpster that says tenants only. I say, Well, as of last night, I am a tenant, so I can throw my stuff away. She scoffs and starts taking pictures and videos of us dumping trash. Then we take our U-Haul over to our friend's house to give them the stuff that we bought from us, and as we're driving, I get a call saying that the lady is following me. And sure enough, she is following me about three cars behind. I pull into a neighborhood, and she continues to follow me for a few blocks. My friend calls the cops, and I get out of the car and say, What's your deal? And she immediately drives away. This was only earlier today, so I'll update this post if anything else happens. And our last story was posted by user Metal the Anime Fan, titled Entitled Dad Wants to Put His Family's Kitten to Sleep Rather Than Paying 60 Euros for Treatment. So this just happened today. For a bit of context, I'm doing a two day internship at a vet. It's very interesting to see the vet at work. They mostly see cats and dogs, which were the only animals I saw today. Also, we never got to interact with this entitled dad, just speak to him on the phone. So, now to the story. This morning, two women brought in a kitten that was scheduled to be put to sleep, aka die, all because of some health problems the owners claimed the kitten had. The vet I was interning with was supposed to put the young kitty, eight weeks, to sleep. She was very against it, and I was sent out of the consult room because this type of stuff is very emotional for the owners. As I was waiting for them to be done, I heard the vet try to save this kitten. In the end, she concluded that the kitten needed more examining as she didn't believe putting it to sleep was the right option. The main symptom the family claimed the family claimed this little kitten had was not true. They claimed he didn't eat, not true. They claimed he puked after eating, not true. We ended up keeping him at the vet clinic all day, and we were going to keep him for four days. The vet called the owner, one of the people who brought him in, to give her an update and the costs of all the stuff, the stay and the examinations. The woman said she would debate it with her husband. A couple hours later, the entitled dad calls, claiming the costs were too much for a cat. He told my vet that he would either spend money on this cat or feed his kids. He said that if my vet didn't want to put him to sleep, the kitten would go back to the farm with his littermates and see how nature goes. The vet claimed that the kitten had some growth and nutrition problems, but that wouldn't get better if he went back to the farm. He then wanted to take the kitten back without the costs. The vet said that he could discuss this with her boss. I don't know how the kitten is now, but I hope the kitten is still there tomorrow. Will post update tomorrow. And update. This morning, the kitty was there. The vet said the owners are going to wait to see if the vet can find anything. We noticed that the kitten had some neurological issues as he was moving his back legs very weird. The vet thinks the owners wouldn't want it anymore if they learn about the leg issue, and maybe they will relinquish him. If that happened, the vet said she will give him to her brother so she can visit the little guy a lot. Okay. That's the end of the episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments section. And tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me what you'd like to hear. Tell me about the stories. Let's have a little bit of a chat. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next episode. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.